Hi everyone, Tammy Govea here at Day of Days and what a day it's been. And we have Lauren Coslow. Give it up for And Billy Flynn. Was that a good one? Day of days and what a day it's been. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. Fire. Woo. That's fire. I was thinking so the pairing, yep. the interview pairing choice was really interesting. Mom and son. Yeah, but but best friends. That's, that's it. There's the dynamics between the two of you throughout the years has been complicated and emotional, but there's a loyalty factor that I think from a fan's perspective speak speak about the loyalty factor because obviously the relationship is there off camera that translates <laughs> yeah. to on. Lauren, I, speak I, about I, Kate's I, loyalty. I'm a little fond of Billy. This is not, I'm not gonna lie. I love him. And I love Lauren. But Kate's a different story. Kate, well, Kate's well, always pulling some shady shit. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Now Kate, she loves Chad. She loves Chad. Definitely. It, Things got a little complicated, but we know that's that's in our blood and yes. our family. Love is love. It's love is love, but there's a lot of stuff that she has been juggling at various times, and there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I think she also. Oh, this is is the mirror love unconditional? Oh yes. You think so? Oh yeah. yeah. You don't think it's it's unconditional if you do what I want you to do. Well, that's important. You're supposed to, with Demira, yeah. you are supposed to do what you're told to do. Yeah. What you're supposed, you're supposed to do, to do with what the you're hierarchy supposed to do. Yeah. of the family, for yeah. sure. But you still, although, see, Stefano really did kind of it. <laughs> Stefano, you, now, he cut you off. Me, he totally did. When he was so jealous, when he set that whole thing up, no. and it was like, no, I know that was, that was very sad. Chad's, been, Chad's loved Kate more unconditionally than any any oh other God, character ever has. With those big blue eyes and saying that. I feel really guilty. Is it not true? Name a time that Chad hasn't forgiven you, like really quickly. No, you really have forgiven yeah. me. That's why I love you. Yeah. You have forgiven me. That's but that's true. also why maybe why maybe Chad needs to no. put the foot down once. No. Like, be like, that's no. enough. No, that's I'm enough, Kate. No. <laughs> Um, I won't stand by while you break my heart over and over again. All right, let's put it this way. Sometimes she has to do the things that are written for her to do. <laughs> and rationalize it. Yes, I mean, yeah. that's, always, that's always true. But in every genre, it. in every show. Yeah, so it is really yeah. difficult, but I'm, hopefully I'm always playing it, because it's not just you. It definitely has been Lucas, it's been all of her children. Yeah. It's a complicated yeah. situation. But I'll, I will say, out of those, Chad's, you've, Chad's had the easiest from you. No, you 100%, because I, yeah. I would hear from fans about yeah. the way I was treating Chad. Because yeah. they're why are you why are you treating Chad so well? What about Lucas? What about yeah. what about you know? And so we do have this very special relationship, yeah. you know. And I think it does go back to that thing about with Madeline and you know dying and like I'm responsible. I mean, maybe I feel more responsible. For yeah. You. Do you want me to hold? I feel like I'd want to be like passing this. I'm just gonna lean into you. <laughs> when when I think about Chad and Kate. Well, I think when anyone thinks about the relationship between the two of you, Joe Mascolo comes to front and center. So I would love for you two to talk about your relationship with him or, or how, how knowing him professionally, and if you want to speak personally, how that impacted you. What did you go for? I mean, you, you knew him for many years. Um, yeah, I mean, I... It's, it, it's, it, is, it is very interesting because we were talking at, uh, in another interview about, for me, I had worked with him you know, on and off with the character wasn't as involved and yet we had this history. So over the years we'd have like when you saw her as a call girl with him and you started to get this backstory. So we had all of this backstory. So when we finally started to really work together and especially in that storyline where she was poisoning people and had really in a way gone mad and he rescued her. And uh, but of course she had to marry him. I mean there was you know there was a deal there. And I remember at the time <laughs> He was so wonderful because he was so into his character and he had the full story and how Demira should be and how they should behave. So I'm, of course, Kate at that time, he rescued her, but she is not in love with him and she's just doing it. She's being blackmailed into doing it. So I had to 
having to play that. And they had the whole wedding. I don't know if you, it was, you know, so the Victor's there. And the whole thing. He said to humiliate her. To humiliate, you, humiliate, you, like to break her spirit. And I remember one scene where we just, he's like, he, we're back and forth. He's almost like shaking me. And I'm just like, finally, I'm done. I'm marry you. And that's it. And I'm going to. And then we did the wedding. But still, I, you can see that she didn't. And he said to me, what is it? What's going on? When you, how can you treat him like this? You have to love him. And I said, you asked Joe. Because you know, you didn't have this conversation. With you have to wait. I can't love you now. She can't love you now. You know, you've blackmailed her. So you stood up for your choices. Oh, you had was very important to do that because he was fiery and full of it if you didn't do that that you know you had to do it but he respected that too it was a point of view but he was angry at me he really was and in the wedding if you watch it he is he was so pissed. he was really pissed <laughs> off because because like i'm going to my you know i'm going to the gallows that's how she felt and i but i <laughs> at the end i said you'll see what's going to happen I'm going to fall in love with you. And I don't even think it was written that I was going to fall in love with him. But I, I knew that she was going to. And, and because he liked who she was. He liked her. He allowed her to be powerful. And she, lo- she really grew to love him. And then it was wonderful to work with her. But he was fiery. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Your thoughts on I was, Joe? I was... I was I was just grateful to know him. I was grateful to, to get to work with him the short time that I did. Um, yeah. 54 years of history. What does that feel like to be a part of a tradition? Because tradition in and of itself nowadays almost seems like a novelty. Everything <laughs> seems so transitory. Yes, yes, you know, yes, people's yeah, attention sure. spans are yeah, yeah. milliseconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you're part of a 54 year tradition. Yeah. So speak a little bit about it. Yeah how that resonates with you again I mean <laughs> he, she's, she's, well, she's, she's, a, she's I, a part of it I mean it's Keep kind it of going. crazy because even when I came on the show that tradition was there and now I realize I mean I came on in when 95 you, yeah, so on? how many years is that uh, when 95 so I've been oh, wow, on the show over that. 20 something well, 23 long, years right? you've consistently been on the landscape yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and I think we've got I mean I haven't and I would never ex- have expected that to happen so you really do, you I mean I definitely feel part of that and yet it's always brand new um, I'll say one thing when we come to an event like this and you, you meet with the audience one on one and they talk about as, it as a tradition for them and somebody that's been part of their family for 50 years 40 I mean the whole and the new members of the family watching too it, it's enormous it really is and it's um, I hope I would like to think that you know all of the networks and everything real I mean I think they do realize yeah that it is such an important form of entertainment especially with the family especially nowadays you know to be able to have generations gather around and watching a show like that over the years like that that's amazing it's really amazing and I think we're really lucky I mean the, with the NBC that we're, we've been here I mean it's it's great Speaking of entertainment, I have a little trivia here. Now, I know the both of you, Jen Lilly, held a bowling fundraiser some time back um, for her organization, Child Health. And so you were both on a bowling team together. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. That was, yeah, that was a long time ago. I don't even have it. I have it. It's really pretty cute. Send it to me. I I want to see it. It's so cute. I thought I posted it Maybe, but I don't, I don't know. That was that was. I was. I just started. I was probably. I think you I walked. Had, I remember. I was walking around everywhere, just you, I, scared I, out of my mind. I actually remember. Like, you really? Yeah. You're pretty flirty with people. Was I flirty? Not me, mother. I with. <laughs> yeah. Very cute. Before we wrap up, I'm gonna give you some bowling trivia. Oh. Or or, or okay. you know, give me an answer if you if you All know right. the answer. Okay. okay so. Shoot. Yes. The first bowling alley called Knickerbockers was built in 1840 in what Philadelphia. city? You say Philadelphia. I think in New York City. Knickerbockers. The golden bowling ball goes to Lauren Coslow. Really? Oh, we had to be one question. Just one like, question? That's all we have time for. I know. You would just won. We'll send you a prize. We're just all very, very Thank you, you guys. Thank you. I wish we had more time. Yeah. I know. Thanks, guys. 